This is the second lecture on chemical energy and we're going to look at using Hesse's law to calculate the enthalpy change for reactions which are not easy to determine experimentally. So what is Hesse's law? Hesse's law states that the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route taken. And the importance of this is that it allows us to work out the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction which we cannot determine experimentally. Now you may remember in the lab we proved that Hesse's law worked by carrying out this reaction. So we prepared a solution of potassium chloride in two different ways. By dissolving potassium hydroxide in hydrochloric acid or firstly by dissolving potassium hydroxide in water and then reacting it with hydrochloric acid. And according to Hesse's law, the enthalpy change for this route, delta H1, should equal the enthalpy change for this route. So from there to there was minus 20, from there to there was minus 30. So the enthalpy change for that route there should be minus 50 kilojoules per mole. And we carried out this, this experiment in the lab and it worked very well. Another example here, like what is the enthalpy change for A changing into B? And for whatever reason it's not possible to determine that experimentally in the lab. But we can go from A to C and then from C to B. So going from A to C, well we know going from C to A the delta H value is 150. So going from A to C the enthalpy change will be minus 150. And then going from C to B same direction as the arrow which has a delta H value of minus 80. So delta H value for A to C, A to B would be minus 230 kilojoules per mole. Right, another way of applying Hesse's law to determine the enthalpy change for unknown reactions is using equations. So let's look at this example. The equation for the combustion of methane is given below, but we don't have a delta H value. But we know the delta H value for these three reactions, and using this we can build up this reaction. So we want one mole of methane on the left hand side. Methane only appears in this equation here. It's one mole, but it's on the right hand side, so we have to flip, we have to swap this reaction round. So it becomes CH4 goes to C plus 2H2. Because we flipped the, create the reaction round, the delta H value would no longer be minus 75, but it would be plus 75. Okay. Then we come to oxygen. Well, oxygen appears in two of these equations. So when we come across that, the best thing to do is just leave it for the meantime and just pray that it falls out at the end. So we move on to the next substance, CO2. It only appears in this equation here. We want one mole on the right hand side. That's what we've got. So we'll just copy out this equation as it is. C plus O2 going to CO2 and the delta H value would just be minus 394. Then we come to the water. We need two moles on the right hand side. We've got water on the right hand side here but only one mole. So we need to multiply this equation by 2. So it becomes 2H2 plus O2 goes to 2H2O. Right, because we've multiplied the equation by 2, we're going to need to multiply the delta H value by 2. So that's going to become minus 572. Okay, so let's add it all together and hope those oxygens pop out. 
So we'll cancel something, anything that appears in both the left hand side and the right hand side. So we've got one more carbon there, one more carbon there, they cancel out. Two moles at each two there, two moles at each two there. That's all that cancels. So that leaves us with CH, one more of CH4, one, two moles of O2, one more of CO2, and two moles of H2O, which is what we wanted. And we add up these delta H values, we'll get the delta H value for this reaction. So if we add all that up, we get minus 891. So delta H value for this is minus 891 kilojoules per mole. Right, we can also use Hesse's law to work out the entropy change for reactions we can't carry out in the lab using bond entropies. Now the bond entropy is the energy required to break one mole of bonds. And this, these two tables come from your data book. On the left hand side we've got bond entropies and the right hand side we've got mean bond entropies. What's the difference? Well, the bond entropy table, all these are diatomic molecules, H2O2, N2, F2, etc. Whereas on the right hand table, none of these things are actually diatomic molecules, they're just bonds within molecules. So for example, the CH bond here is 412. This figure 412 is just an average figure for a CH bond. The actual exact figure for CH bond may vary slightly depending on what molecule the CH bond is in. Whether or not it's in methane, or it's in propanol, or cyclohexane, or ethanoic acid, it might vary slightly from this 412 value. This 412 is just it's a pretty accurate average of all the CH bonds. Whereas here, these are all exact figures for a, for a one mole of diatomic molecules. These values are all for breaking bonds. So they're all endothermic, they're all positive, although the positive sign isn't shown uh, because you have to put energy in to break bonds. But also, if we change it to a negative sign, it tells us the energy required or the energy given out when a bond is formed. So when uh, eight, one mole of uh, HH bonds are formed, minus 436 kilojoules per mole of energy will be produced. So regarding Hesse's law, we can use this to work out entropy change for reactions using this equation. We add up all the bonds you break and add it to all the bonds you make the difference will tell you that delta H value is. Remember the bond breaking will all be positive, the bond making will always be negative. So we'll end up with a positive value, take away, or positive value plus a negative value. So it'd be like something, take away something. Let's make an example. Calculate the entropy change for the following reaction. So we've got We've got ethene here, oops, again, so there's our ethene, we've got hydrogen and we've got ethane over here. So first of all you have to identify all the bonds you're going to have to break and all the bonds you're going to have to make. So let's look at bond breaking first of all. So 
the bonds we're going to have to break are at C double bond C because it doesn't appear over here. Now it's important that you don't think you can just go from there to there by breaking one carbon carbon bond. In your data booklet you've got values for a CC bond and a CC double bond and a CC triple bond. But you'll notice the CC double bond is not exactly double the CC single bond because there's a slight difference which you don't need to worry about too much about the nature of the second bond in a carbon-carbon double bond. So just break the double bond and then make a single bond. So we've got to break that bond and we'll have to break this bond here as well. So the carbon-carbon double bond this takes 612 kilojoules per mole. The HH bond is 436. So all the bond breaking is going to add up to 1048. The bond making on the other hand, the bonds we're going to have to make are a carbon-carbon single bond and two CH bonds. So the carbon-carbon single bond energy produced when that is formed is minus 348 and then it's two lots of CHs okay so the value for the carbon hydrogen bond is 412 but we make two of them or two moles of them so that's 824 so the total amount of energy given out by the bonds being made is 1172 so the delta H value, bond breaking, 1048, plus bond making, which is minus 1172, which comes to minus 124 kilojoules per mole. If we compare this with the theoretical value, find it slightly out. Theoretical value comes out at 120 minus 120 kilojoules per mole. A difference is due to the fact that in several places in this calculation we've used mean bond entropy values so that accounts for the slight difference. So four things you should be able to do. You should be able to use Hesse's law to determine the entropy change for our reaction from diagrams. You should be able to use Hesse's law to determine the entropy change for our reaction from equations. You should be able to explain the difference between bond entropy and mean bond entropy and use mean or bond entropy values to determine the entropy change for a reaction.